friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 battle series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be continuing on with our Series 7 content here on the channel. As you can see, the team that we'll be featuring today is on the screen in front of you now, consisting of Tapu Lele, Driftlim, Dusclops, Incineroar, Igleth and Draco Zolt. So uh, we've got an interesting team here. We'll get into the details as always when we get into the battles. We'll have a couple of games with it. I'll throw the rental team up at the end of the episode. So if you want to stick around and grab that and try it out for yourselves, I guarantee it's going to be a lot of fun. Be a poker base down in the description below. So without further ado, friends, let's just get into the games and we'll see what this team can do. Okay, we've got a first opponent of the episode and they are playing a team of Landorus. Metagross, Glastria, Cresselia, Galarian Moltres, and Regieleki. So we've got a bunch of brand new Pokemon in here. Obviously with the Galarian Moltres, the Regieleki, and the Glastria. We've got a Trick Room mode for sure in there with the Cresselia. Uh, you've got Speed Control outside of that with probably Electro Web maybe on the uh, Regieleki. And then obviously Max Airstream on the Moltres. So all sorts going on here. Um, but... Uh, our Drift Blim Lele is not bad. Obviously, we're probably going to see uh, the Metagross lead from my opponent. That wouldn't surprise me uh, if we did. But we can burn it, so we're going to be alright, I think, going for this lead if we want to. Um, I think we probably want Gigalith as well. It does super well against the majority of this team, especially if we can get a Trick Room up. So maybe... Uh, there's not a lot my opponent can do to kind of stop us getting the Trick Room either. I mean, they've got the Moltres, but uh, Moltres is going to be really threatened by Tapu Lele for sure. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. I mean, we could go Draco's ult as well. The reason I've got Draco's ult in there, it was originally um, a Reggie Drago, but then I was like, mm, well, we've got the Sand. Uh, we're kind of weak to Tapu Fini, so let's throw in Reggie um, Draco's ult because it's obviously got Sand Rush now, so... Uh, taking advantage of that brand new hidden ability that we've got access to in the Crown Tundra. Um, so we'll see what see what the team's like. Like, obviously it's got a lot of mods to it, so it's going to be interesting. Cresselia Metagross, this is a throwback lead from like 2010, 2012, 13. Like, these, not 2010, what am I talking about? 2013. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Well, the thing is with Drifflim, we have the Unburden ability. We've got the Psychic Seed there, so the Psychic Terrain activates that, gives us double speed, and it also boosts our special defense as well. Now, the only thing that I would worry about here is an ally switch from the Cresselia, which would be a little bit worrying, but I do want to go for... Um, I mean, I could double into the Metagross here, a Will-O-Wisp and a Shadow Ball. Um, I just... I do worry a little bit about... We could cover bases, I guess, with a Shadow Ball into the Cresselia. And if we do see an ally switch, at least we'll get a spec Shadow Ball into that Metagross slot. Not going to see that. We're going to see the Metagross just go for its max. Which is interesting. So, I mean, the Will-O-Wisp is really nice onto it. Unless we do see ally switch, of course. Which we may do. <sighs> ally switch. That's all I'm going to say on that. Just helping hand. Okay, well that's not so bad. That, 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 we can, we can deal with that. Um, and we get the burn, which is nice. It slows everything down a little bit. And we'll get some nice fat damage into this Cresselia. Now I don't know if Tapu Lele is going to be able to take an attack, a helping hand, even though they're burned. I think we still go down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well... <clears throat> it's not the dust. Although, we do need to start kind of thinking about setting up our trick room. Um, the burn is obviously really useful. Um, and we can bring in Dusclops. Like, Dusclops is going to be able to tank whatever the Metagross decides to throw at us. We probably want to deal with the Cresselia before we do anything else. Um, okay, so I think... We could probably double into the Cresselia here with a Nightshade and a Shadow Ball. And that should be enough to get it. Now I worry about the ally switch. Because then if, if that's what we see, um, we'll end up proccing the, the weakness policy in the Metagross. And it becomes a little bit more threatening. So let's hope we don't see ally switch. It's always a thing like with Cresselia because it's got kind of a spare slot now. Where you feel like 
it would just make sense to run out of switch and I want to see okay so we're gonna see the Moltres which again isn't isn't ideal but it's not the worst thing in the world um, we'll get some nice chip damage onto it and we are gonna see the hailstorm come out okay well with the burn there it's not really enough to kind of take us down which is good um, and we're stalling out my opponent's max turns, which is a nice thing here. Um, the problem is we've got sap, uh, we've got sap strength, but unfortunately we can't really take advantage of it in this match because, uh, well, right now we can't because of the the metagross, um, because of its clear body, so we can't really reduce its attack stat. Uh, we could go chasing the Moltres, get some health back and just go for another Nightshade. Or we could... Let Drifling go down, burn the Moltres and Trick Room. And then we get Gigalith onto the field and that might not be a bad idea. And we're just burning the Moltres here so we get that additional chip damage because with the hail and the burn it'll stack up and it'll be in uh, night shift range quite soonish. Okay, well, as long as you don't flinch here, that's the main thing because Metagross isn't going to take us down. That's Life Orb Moltres. Okay, well, there's a max clip. That's fine. And we do have Pain Split so we do have that on our side. Wow, that does like nothing. <laughs> strong strong metagross okay well we've kind of nerfed it enough and that's the end of its max turns now gigalith can make its way onto the field as we get the trick room set up which is great and um, metagross got plus plus one defense so it's it's not too bad the problem is going for the bulldoze will proc the weakness policy on the metagross as well at the same time so we kind of have to attack that if we are going to attack anything um, so it might be worth just rock sliding this first turn and going for a, a nightshade going to, to proc the weakness policy. It's not super effective, well, it is a super effective attack, but it's kind of locked in with the same damage. This is a mechanic I should know, but I'm, I'm not like 100% sure on what the mechanic is here. Like the last thing I want to do, actually, yeah, we just rock slide and pain split. What am I talking about? What am I talking about Nightshade for? Forget Nightshade. We need to Pain Split. And then the next turn, once we got rid of the, the Moltres, we bulldoze our way out of this. Okay. Oh, well, you're going to switch. Cresselia, I would imagine, coming in. Yeah, that's fine. That's super fine. Because we still got our max. And they may go... I mean, what are you going to go for? Uh, Stomp and Tantrum, I guess. But if we get the flint, uh, well, we're not going to get that, which is a little bit unfortunate. Okay. And an iron head. Alright, well, that's fine. kind of want to go max rockfall into the Cresselia now, just to pick up the knockout there. Um, and probably... Mm, yeah, because we need to stop them reversing the trick room. So we'll go max rockfall. That should take the Cresselia down. And um, go for another pain split into the Metagross. Because the Metagross at this point is doing literally zero. Um, and I think we're in a decent enough position right now. Especially with our Trick Room up. I think that's the thing. We need to keep the Trick Room active. Because then the Moltres is not a problem when it comes back onto the field. It's so low health as well. So I think we'll be able to deal with it pretty well. Pretty handily. Um, and there's a helping hand. Helping hand. I mean, I don't mind this really because if you proc our weakness policy, that's, that's like way better for us. And we we know that you're not going to be doing really any damage to the Dusclops, even with a helping hand. Like with uh, with the help uh, without it, you're doing basically nothing anyway. So I think I don't really mind this. Whatever we see on the Metagross. Hopefully it's gone into the Gigalith. That's gone Earthquake. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Now we get the free policy boost. And we're sitting in a magical, magical place. <laughs> a magical place. 
What am I talking about? <laughs> the things that come out of my mouth that go around in my head. But hopefully it's entertaining for you guys. At least. At least that's what this is what it's meant to be, isn't it? It's meant to be entertaining. Glass Rare coming out. Now this is the Pokemon why I kinda had Gigalith in the team to begin with, really. Um yeah, we'll go for the rock ball into it. I can really don't um I mean, I could just get rid of the Metagross here and go for the Pain Split. I think that's probably the best idea. Let's get rid of the Metagross right now. Um, I would just worry if Metagross switches out to Moltres. It's kind of wasting the turn. Um, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I think we're still in a decent position. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's just get rid of this Metagross once and for all. And that kind of frees up what we can do with the rest of the Pokemon. I really need to check whether Nightshade procs weakness policies or not. It would make sense if it did, and it would also make sense if it doesn't. So it's a mechanic that I'm just not 100% sure on. It's not something I've really come across. Obviously with not having Metacross in the format either, so... Um, close combat. It's fine, man, that does so much damage, doesn't it? It's nasty. But... I think we've got... Have we got one turn of Trick Room left? I think we may do. Yeah. Okay. Well. <clears throat> this is all right now because I think yeah we get rid of the the Moltres this next turn. We'll go for a rock ball. Um. I mean we could go after Glastria and just yeah Nightshade. I think it's in Nightshade range anyway, so we'll go after the the Moltres. And even if it's not, the Moltres isn't taking either thing down. Uh, this turn, so. It will go down to burn and the residual sand damage anyway. So we, we were pretty comfortable. I think that this whole game, really, um, the team has performed really quite well um, in this in this entire game. So uh, I feel like it's a good example of how it can work. And we're just taking our time with stuff. We're not rushing or anything like that, you know. Um, and I do feel like Igalith is a very good shout at the minute. It's very slow. Uh, it gets you weather control. Um, it hits most things in the format pretty hard. Um, and it's got the defense to kind of support it as well. So very good game to my opponent. And we will swiftly move on to our next opponent of the episode. Okay, we've got our next opponent up. And they are playing a team of Tapu Fini, Reggie, Aleki, Urshifu, Dusclops, Glastria, and Cresselia. It's all the Glastrias at the minute, isn't it? It's all the rage. It's flavor of the week, uh, definitely. But I think it just benefits our Gigalith, really. Um, let's see what really threatens Gigalith. There's only really two things on my opponent's team that do. Urshifu and the Tapu Fini. I mean, the Glastria we have to be a little bit careful of. Just because uh, it can do some big damage to us. Especially after it procs its own weakness policy. Uh, okay. What are we going to do? I mean, we could potentially go Draco's Alt as a lead, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like maybe Tapu Lele is not bad. Although the the problem is going Tapu Lele the Urshifu can become a bit of an an issue for us. That would be hmm. Maybe we go the same lead again, and then we've got... Yeah, I think we just go the same four again. Although, I kind of like the idea of bringing Incineroar to this game, just for the Intimidate. Uh, but it does give us another Pokemon that... Okay, we'll go with these. We'll not, we'll not go delve too far into this. I think we need the Tailwind support from, from Drifblim to help against the Urshifu, and I would imagine that's... We'll definitely see the Urshifu in this game. I would I would assume. And we may see the Finny lead. Uh okay. Double double trick here. Which is interesting. Um kinda wanna pull a double switch, if I'm like completely honest, because I need to get Dusclops on the field with Gigalith. Uh for the fact that we can't allow my opponent to get their weakness policy procced before we or the, before the turn that we do. Um, I 
I could double the Dusclops. It's definitely an option. Then it takes away my opponent's ability to... Um, Although I think we'll probably just see Ally switch from the Cresselia. I know we talked about it in the last game, but I feel like that's what we're going to do. We're going to see. And I know I'm wasting... Um, I am wasting the berry on... Yeah, on Drifling. But I think optimally... I think optimally... Is that even a word? I think we're better off going for a Gigalith. Because I, I just feel like the Trick Room's coming here. I don't, I don't see another mod we've got i guess super fast mod out on the field super hyper offensive and my opponent needs this to sort of like get some and gain some speed control here and um, to kind of start building momentum in this match so it makes sense that they go trick room otherwise it's like i don't really know what their game plan is there's the ally switch and i think this is the ally switch to allow the dusclops to get their trick room up yeah okay now, I don't know if I want him max yet. I think I would be better from Bulldoze and just Rock Slide. Because then we may catch something like Glastria on the switching. The only issue is Will O Wisp from the opposing Dusclops. Okay, well, we'll get the Bulldoze. Great. I don't know what my opponent's going to be going for here, to be honest. But if we get it, like, a flinch onto the Cresselia, that would be super nice. Okay, but well, we do hit both. Double flinch would be amazing. Okay, well, we kind of expected that. That was going to be a possibility. Um, okay. We'll have to deal with this and no flinches at all. <laughs> Alright, well. We can get rid of the Dusclops here, I think. Apart from our Dusclops is going to be slower than theirs. So we're going to have to rely on a flinch from our Gigalith. Like, literally a flinch. Um, and I think a Rock Slide plus a Nightshade will get the Dusclops. But we need a flinch. We, we like, that's like bare minimum what we need so we need a little bit of luck here come on giggly don't flinch ah it's not in range either it's not in range at all mm. and there's a pin split that's why we needed the flinch because that just yeah makes it very difficult for us to kind of build any sort of momentum from here okay well we could max this next turn, although I feel like it's kind of wasting our max. Is it? Because we could get Dusclops. We could totally get Dusclops from here. The max rock fall. And that's the one thing that I want to be getting rid of. And then go for a pain split into Cresselia. Um, how many turns have we got left? Two. Not really enough. We could probably get Cress and two Nightshades. Uh, is this the bat? I'm gonna go for it. I really want to just get rid of this Dusclops. Let's see, let's hope it's enough. It should be enough. We're neutral attack, really, because we're kind of just the the, the Willow was mitigated our our weakness policy boost. <clears throat> and then hopefully we can put the Crest in range for the next turn. Whatever comes in, then we can we can we can just deal with that as it comes. But it's an awkward turn to, to max. This is why it might not be the best play at the right time, even though we're getting rid of the Dusclops. The problem is, on the third turn of our max, we're going to probably more than likely have to protect to get another Trick Room up, if that's what we want to do, um, which is not really optimal at all. Okay, well, let's see what my opponent's got. Mm, press probably in range from a Gigalith attack this next turn. And definitely a double up, I would say. But we have to be conscious of Ally Switch, which we've already seen. It's happened to come in, which is fine, because we've got the Lele in the back, so we just need to remove the Cresselia. Uh, and then we'll be able to go on our merry way. Um, 
We could pan split the tap of Finny. We're not a bad thing. Just if we do that, we probably miss the Cresselia. Let's nightshade the Cress and Rockfall as well. I mean, we could. Yeah, we have to Rockfall. The only thing is, we could Quake that slot to get the special defense boost if we see Ally Switch, which, yeah, I'm assuming. And I don't mind this play like one little bit. We're going to get some fat damage onto this type of Finny, which is, which is ideal. Um, and it's not maxed either, so that's another thing that we've got going for us. Oh, it might be, it might be in range of a Nightshade. This would be incredible if we pick up the knockout here. Oh, there we go. That's what you get for ally switching. That's what you get. <laughs> okay, our trick room turns are ending now. So it'll depend what my opponent's last Pokemon is. Um, but we've done quite a lot of work so far. They've still got their max turn, so we need to... Okay, it's Glastria. Okay, I think we pain split this. Uh, good trick, me. Really. I don't think we need to, though, because I think when we get Drift Limb in, we can... Uh, we need to... Okay, let's think about this. I think we'll be... We could... We can still win this, but... That trick room, yeah, trick room's ended. I don't think we want trick room. I think we want a pain split last year because I think that's going to be useful. And I think we will go for a max rock fall into Glastria because I think the Cresselia needs to trick room here. And I think the Glastria, well, they may, they may actually attack. This is the problem, where we're rock falling into the glass tray. We are going to proc a weakness policy, but... They're going to have to attack the dust corpse. Set up the trick room. Which is quite possibly what they're doing. Okay. No trick room. Which is good. Max hail into... The sclops are going after it. Okay. So that's fine. I don't mind that too much, because then we are going to... At least get rid of the hail. We're going to proc a weakness policy, but then we do get to bring Tapalele onto the field. Chilling me. Mm. It's going to be very, very close, I think, this end game. We're going to have to get it, like, we're going to have to nail it on with these ally switches. That's really good damage. That is really good damage. That is really good damage. Okay. Well, the crest is probably in Dazzling Gleam range, I think, after. Yeah, I think that the crest is probably in Dazzling Gleam range. After the sand chip. Specs Dazzling Gleam should take it down. Yeah, and then we got Drift Limb to come in late game and just finish off the uh, the Glastria. And the problem is now for my opponent. It's whether or not you target like another like a superpower from, from Gigalith now. You probably do enough with the combined damage of the Dazzling Gleam. It's just all about Dazzling Gleam getting the crest. Because then it avoids the ally switch as well. Which is really ideally what we want. And then my opponent just with Glass Ray as their last, their last Pokemon. Okay. Let's go Dazzling Gleam. And... Just concerned. We are Specs. We are Specs. So we should take the crest down with a Dazzling Gleam. Stab Specs. Like 100% we should take it down. I just worry about going for the superpower because we're probably going to see an ally switch here. But we could just go for a rock slide and it's a bit more of a guarantee, isn't it? Yeah, in case anything bad happens. In case anything bad happens. Okay, we get the crest. That's ideal. And Hailstorm. Is this going to be into Lele? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Lele's kind of done its job. Got rid of the crest. The rock slide. This is why we should have superpowered. <laughs> should have went with that first, that first initial thought. Sometimes just trust, trust your thoughts. Like go with the first thing that comes in. Okay, chilling there, boosting again. It's all going to be down to. Um, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. We didn't even need drift limb. Gigalith, King, King Gigalith. This has been a perfect episode to actually showcase the team and what it's capable of. So I'm actually really happy with the games that we've had today so we'll jump over now very good game to my opponent as well uh, we'll jump over now 
and grab the rental team for you guys. Okay, friends, here we are. Here is the team, the Tapalele, the Driftblim, the Dusclops, Incineroar, Gigalith, and the Drake Result. I'm a little sad that we didn't get to see the Drake Result today. Honestly, I think it's a very good pick for the team. I think it covers a lot of the stuff, and it's probably good in some situations. Uh, so if you do try the team out, let me know what your thoughts are on it. And uh, I hope, basically, you just enjoy the team. I think it's very solid. I think it's a, probably one of the better teams that I've made so far in Series 7. Yahoo! And I think I've made some decent teams so far. So uh, I, I really like the concept of this team. I think it's very good. And I would expect to see the popularity of Lele, Driftblim, and, and Dusclops, Gigalith. Not together, but separately. I think on separate teams, these combinations will start to pick up a lot of usage. So it's good to get familiar with them now. And I hope that is what is useful for you guys. So um, there is a team. And uh, obviously, there is a, a very little, subtle, subtle message. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw it in there. But anyway i hope you guys have enjoyed the episode i hope you're keeping well like i say i'm uh, sorry for the last couple of days we haven't had uploads so hopefully we'll get back on track just some things going on outside of the channel uh, that's meant i haven't been able to as much as i wanted to this week but i've got a lot of teams planned so do stick around and uh, if you have enjoyed the content today of course if you have you can drop a like if you if you have um that would be really helpful and uh please sub 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 I can't even get to the point right. Subscribe if you want <laughs> to the channel for more of this content. Anyway, so I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for all the support as always. And have a great rest of your day. And I'll um, catch you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.